Some say it doesn't exist, others that it doesn't last. But those who claim to have experienced love at first sight find it both exasperating and unexplained. In March 1987, Ken Southard was a junior in college, looking for an adventure. Sarah Turner, at 21, was anxious to leave England. She said goodbye to her boyfriend and headed south. Kent and Sarah both traveled to Australia for a three-month volunteer program. They arrived at Wilson's Promontory on a warm summer day, and when their paths crossed, their eyes locked. You know, and you kind of look at somebody and then you look away because they catch your eye and then you look away and you keep looking back and, you know, and then you kind of, the next time that they look at you, you kind of nod your head and, and say, hey, how you doing? The attraction was spontaneous, yet they both remained silent. Hours after that quiet connection, they were pulled apart, assigned to different expeditions, but neither forgot the face nor the feeling. When they came together again two weeks later on a sailing trip, they didn't even know each other's name, but the attraction bubbled to the surface immediately. I felt that after I'd known him for just a few days that he was the person that I, I would like to spend a lot of time with and even the rest of my life. And it was actually written down in my diary. As fate would have it, the two were forced to part again on separate assignments. Kent kept thinking about Sarah and seeing her face. He had to act, so he sent her a few letters, but they went unanswered. It's like, man, I gotta get up there and see what's going on. Just to, you know, see her do something. You gotta, you, uh, you feel so alone down there, uh, and you, hopefully she's feeling the same way you are. Feelings of restlessness and torment filled his consciousness. Determined to see her again, his sexual attraction compelled him to take extraordinary measures. I hitchhiked about 200 miles trying to find her and ended up uh, finally finding them at a base camp. They were just getting ready to leave. I got to see her for about 24 hours, I think. It was very touching, you know, to know that somebody cared enough about me to, to want to do that. And I was very shocked, obviously, when he'd hiked all that way, you know, in a country that he did not know, people that he did not know, and, you know, what difficulties he could have come up against. Kent and Sarah managed to see each other again but only for a day or two each time. The trip was winding down and their last separation loomed. Sarah would be returning to England and Kent to the United States. On the final day, they said goodbye at the airport. He dropped a letter in my hand just before I was due to get on the plane and it was kind of, you know, read this on the way home. And it was a big long letter just, you know, describing exactly how he felt. And I kind of, you know, got all teary eyed to think that you know, maybe I won't see him again because we just didn't know. Shortly after Sarah arrived home, she took a trip to the U.S. to visit Kent, and they found their attraction was even stronger than before. This time, Kent and Sarah knew there would be a next time. He proposed marriage, and she accepted. Sarah tried for months to get a visa to live in the United States. It finally came through in June 1988. Kent and Sarah spent the next three months getting to know each other under the normal situations of everyday life, and their attraction grew to love. One thing they were certain of, they didn't want to be apart ever again. They drove to South Carolina and got married. Fifty dollars on a road map. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took. Sudden sexual attraction is like a bolt from the blue often followed by butterflies in the stomach, a wave of heat and giddiness. Scientists can name and measure the symptoms and point out the object of desire, but can only guess at a connection between the two. Why we are aroused by certain people is still unexplained. Dr. John Money, a leading sexologist at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, offers the theory of love maps a subconscious list of likes and dislikes developed from birth and stored in the brain. A mental picture of the perfect mate as unique to each person as his or her own fingerprint. Actually, there's no choice in whichever kind of love map you're going to have. It's, it's like you don't have any choice in how tall you're going to grow, how much fat you're going to deposit and what your weight is going to be. Growth sort of takes over on its own timetable, and that's true with regard to um, 
the development of the love map. Money asserts that in a case of love at first sight, like Kant and Sarah's, the physical characteristics of their love maps match perfectly. When it is perfect, it's seventh heaven. The closer you get to seventh heaven, the easier it is to fall heavily afflicted with love. And that's when you walk into the crowded room and, yeah, you look at everybody, she looks at everybody, he looks at everybody, and then suddenly... There may also be a mysterious non-visual element working, a sort of sixth sense reacting to odorless airborne hormones called pheromones. Both animals and insects have pheromones. Armies of ants use them to keep in straight lines as they walk. Female dogs in heat release pheromones that attract male dogs from miles around. Their effects on humans, though, are more obscure. Scientists know they are emitted by the human body through glands in the armpits, but have been unable to explain exactly how they work, if they do at all. Winifred Cutler, one of the discoverers of human pheromones, is convinced they do. She has synthesized them into a liquid form and tested them on people. I won't be able to stay away from him. We really do not know how it works. What we know is it does work. We, we discovered that the pheromones, the, the chemical copy of the sex attractant, were the chemical copy of what a sexually attractive young male produces when added to his own fragrance, put on his face four or five times a week, that caused 75% of the men to get an increase in attention from women. Cutler found that women using a different pheromone compound have a similar reaction from men, but they don't work for everyone. Although researchers do know how the human body releases the hormones, how another human senses them still remains a mystery. Whether instant sexual attraction is caused by pheromones or physical features, once a person is smitten, a host of known hormones kick into action, causing symptoms like sweaty palms and flushed skin. According to Dr. Teresa Crinshaw, the euphoria, restlessness, awkwardness, and loss of appetite associated with being in love, all things Ken Southard endured after meeting Sarah, can be traced to a complex cocktail of hormones. Your natural amphetamine, PEA, your natural narcotic, your endorphins, um, oxytocin, which is your touch hormone, the sexual pheromones, the scent hormones, and then I could add half a dozen more. When they hit you at once, and when they hit you forcefully, they've got your attention. There's no two ways about it. And basically, you're stoned. You're in an altered state of consciousness. Deepak Chopra believes this altered state transcends the limits of biology and can only be described properly in spiritual terms. This phase of romantic infatuation is actually a temporary glimpse into uh, what is beyond the ordinary, what is beyond the flux of time, because you're entering a world of magic and enchantment uh, and wonder and innocence and surrender, uh, which is allowing you to glimpse the spiritual dimension of your own being. The fulfillment of desire can transport us into states not easily described without abstract words like magical, wondrous, and spiritual. Can sexual attraction and love be traced directly back to endorphins, oxytocin, and ultimately reproduction? The mix of chemicals that signal sexual attraction do have names, but the elusive mechanism that sets them off still resides in the realm of the unexplained. When the heart pumps double time and the knees grow weak,